I see a church so stunning and so energizing that one single building doesn't have the power to contain it. I see a church where the people grasp Jesus as a relationship to be had, not a religion to obtain. Where living for God is no longer a responsibility, but it is a passion to pursue. I see a church where people are continually taking steps in their spiritual journey with the goal of reaching new heights in every part of their lives. I see a church full of people who are growing in God and discovering that God wants them to make a big difference in this community where every person is experiencing the kind of eye-opening awe moment that only God can deliver. I see a church where God uses people, ordinary people, world changers, community group leaders, staff, volunteers, and global outreach opportunities to serve people in our city so that they in turn would open their hearts and be inspired by God. I see a church so compassionate that people are drawn from impossible situations into a devoted and friendly circle of hope where answers are found and acceptance is given. You see, the church that I see, it is so committed to raising and training and empowering a leadership generation of young people, pastors, and future church planners who will go from this place and be world-changing agents. I see a church who cannot stop searching for lost people because God never stops searching for us. I see a people so kingdom-minded that the number one agenda in their life is to unpopulate hell and overpopulate heaven. You see, the church that I see understands that one person cannot do this alone. The church that I speak of loves daily with the understanding of total and utter dependence on the Holy Spirit. See, I see a church that is about Jesus, all about Jesus. Why? Because the church I see understands that God is all about his people. And this is the church I see. Come on, wherever you're at today, can we give God praise? Come on, let's praise him. Wherever you're at, come on, let's lift it up. Let's praise our good and great God. So delighted that you're tuning in today. I don't know where you're at. Maybe you're at home, you're on your couch. Maybe you've got your community group together. Maybe you're, you're running on the treadmill today. But wherever you find yourself, we're so thankful that you've tuned in to be with us on this weekend. And I just want to remind you of something that I think is super important, and it's this. We're not choosing faith or fear in this season. We are choosing Jesus. Jesus is bigger than the coronavirus. And so uh, thank you for, for tuning in once again. We're glad that you are here. If you're, if you're kind of tuning in, you're like visiting us, and you're like, I don't know, I just know there's no church, and so I thought I'd hop on to Facebook and check this out. Welcome. We're glad you're here. We usually do three services on the weekend, one on Saturday night, two on Sunday. And uh, if you're watching, we are so glad you're here. And when all things settle down, we hope and pray that you would you'd come and be a part of one of our physical services uh, right here at Wellspring Community Church. And let me just remind you of one thing. And this is super important. It's really the mission of our church. And here's what it is. We want real people to find real hope in this real world. So I don't know what you're walking through. I don't know what emotions you're feeling as you're dealing with this and wondering what you're going to do with your kids for two weeks and wondering how you're going to survive and where you're going to find toilet paper. Come on, Jesus. Um, I don't know, but here's whatever it is you're going through. Let me just tell you something. Jesus wants to meet the real you. And if Jesus meets the real you, you'll meet the real him, and he'll change the real world around you. So if your hands are free right now, would you put those together and welcome all of our guests that are watching with us for the very first time. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Well, let's be honest, times are a little bit crazy. Hey, normally, for your, your personality or my personality, you're a planner. And if you're a planner, like this whole thing stinks because you can't even plan your next breath, let alone your next day. And so we're taking this day by day and day, uh, day by day, not week by week or month by month. And so we're just, we're praying and believing. And I just want you to know that wherever you're watching from, if you need anything, if you're in need during this season, if you need food or maybe your kids are out of school and they need help, whatever it is, we want to be the church for you. We know that times like this can cause a lot of stress and a lot of fear. 
and we want to be the church for you. And I just want to say this to you as you're watching wherever you're watching. Listen, without us having church services, it makes it, it, makes it a little bit difficult for us to continue to sustain the vision that God has put inside of us. And so I'm going to ask you this from the bottom of my heart. I don't ever ask you to give. I'm just asking you to remain faithful. If, if Wellspring is your home and uh, you have grown at all uh, by being here, I just want to encourage you. I just want to put it up here. Don't tune me out yet. I got a word for you. But I just want to remind you, if would you would just continue to stay faithful with your giving, you can go to ourwellspringchurch.com forward slash give and just remain faithful. We don't know if this is going to be a week or two weeks or we don't know how long it'll be. And so we just need, we got to continue to do ministry as a church. And so just continue to be faithful. So I'm ready to deliver the word. Are you ready for the word? Come on, wherever you're at, are you ready for the word today? All right, I'm gonna deliver it to you. And I just think God wants to do something today in your life. And so I'm gonna pray. Uh, don't close your eyes if you're on the treadmill, okay? But wherever you're at, if you're available, close your eyes. Let's just seek the Lord for just a moment. Father, we need you. God, we need you in this time. And you say this, that you'll never leave us and you'll never forsake us. You say in your word that you'll draw near to us if we draw near to you, you'll draw near back to us. God, you say this, that you, you cling to us closer than any other human being. And so we hold tight to that in this season. And God, we would be remiss if we didn't pray for President Donald Trump and we pray for the, the government and the elected officials as they're making these difficult decisions, sleepless nights. God, I know the weight that's on their shoulder. I know it. I feel it even as a pastor. So God, I just pray that that wisdom would be divine wisdom from heaven for them to make the right decision. We worship you. Our hearts are open today to be able to see, receive what you have for us. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Well, here's how I want to begin. If you know me, then you know this. I love basketball. I, I love basketball. For me, it goes Jesus family, basketball. It, depending on what season I am, it may be basketball, family, Jesus. And, and I don't know, I'm just joking with you, but I, I love basketball. I think basketball is amazing. Here's how I want to begin. In 1993, there was these two teams. You had Dean Smith's North Carolina Tar Heels playing Steve Fisher's Michigan Wolverines. Now, the Wolverines in 1993, they had these five sensational players. They were freshmen, which just means it was their first year playing basketball in college. And what's interesting is they, they still have this name today. They're called the Fab Five. They were all incredible. Many of them went on to play basketball either in the NBA or overseas. And so we're in the championship game. The score is 73 to 71. Now, if, you've, if you know anything about basketball, you know exactly what happens here. Chris Webber gets the ball in the corner and they double team him. And so he does what any player would do during that, during that issue right there. He, he called what's called a timeout. Well, here's the problem. The Michigan Wolverines did not have any more timeouts. And so when you have no more timeouts and you call one, you get issued what's called a technical foul. So being down two, the Tar Heels went to the line, and the rest is history. The Michigan Wolverines ended up losing the game 77 to 71. Chris Weber's panic attempt to call a timeout will stick with him for the rest of his life. And wherever you may find yourself today, can I ask you a question? Whether it's coronavirus, whether it's in your marriage, whether it's with your family, whether it's with a financial crisis that you may be going through, would you just admit with me today that you may be going through a season where you need a timeout? And you're wondering, Jesus, do I have any more timeouts? Now, here's the good news about Jesus. Jesus gives unlimited amounts of timeouts. However, if you don't call one, he won't give you one. And so if you're 
listening to me today and you're wondering like how do I endure this season, whether it's coronavirus or something else, can I just say this to you? God is offering you a timeout. And he has an unlimited resource of timeouts. Here's where I want to go over the next few moments. No matter, no matter what you're going through, no matter what season you're in, here's the thing that I think God wants to do today. And it's the, it's the kind of the epic statement. I, I prepared a message earlier this week, and when all this went down, I spent most of the day on Friday preparing this new message. And God just dropped this statement in my spirit. And I think it's the big idea for the next few moments. And here's what I think God would say that you've got to replace your restless mind for a restful heart and soul. And I think we would all agree today that God is dealing with our restless mind and our minds are going, what do we do here? What do we do here? And what about school? And what about work? And what about finances? And what, are they gonna give me vacation if I can't go to work? Like we're, we're wrestling with all of these emotions. And what God wants to say to you today is I wanna replace your restless mind for a restful heart and soul. Here's the truth of the matter. Wherever you're at today, here's the truth. Many people are searchers, but very few are finders. So you may be here going, I'm searching, I'm searching, I'm searching, but the truth of the matter, there's 100% of people searching, but the statistic gets a little bit lower when it comes to finding. And I want you not only to search, but I want you to find whatever it is that you're looking for and whether you know it or not, I think today you're looking for a restful soul. A restful heart that no matter what happens around the world or in our country, you can be restful instead of restless. I want you to find it. Now, the truth of the matter is the reason why many people are searchers and not finders is because we are not satisfied with anything. We're searching for the next thing to satisfy us. Why is this? Why do we do that? Well, social media does that. Well, uh, we're comparing ourselves to our neighbor and, and, and wondering what everybody else has. And we find ourselves searching for all of this stuff when God is saying, I want you to find it and you'll only find it when you come to me. And I've got a restful soul for you to have. See, here's what I know and it's happening even right now. I mean, go to CVS right now. Go to Walgreens, go to Walmart, go to Target, go to Sam's Club, go to Costco, go down the aisles where toilet paper and water are. People are going crazy. And listen, no matter what camp you're on, I think there's something that God wants to do inside that maybe change the way we respond on the outside. Because here's the truth of the matter, it's this, busier isn't always better. So in this season where you're struggling and you're confused and you're wondering, what do I do and how do I get through this? Here's what you cannot do. You cannot just create a busy season for you. You're, what am I to do this, 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 and fill your time with all of this stuff. And God says, listen, you're trying to fill it up with all this stuff. You're trying to find it. But only a few people actually find this restful soul, this restful heart that I want to give you. So there's a story in the Bible. It's one of the very first stories that we read in the Bible. It's the story of, of Cain and Abel. And if you've read your Bible, you know the, the kind of the, the, the big epic part of this story. Cain and Abel, they're brothers, and God is talking to the brothers, and they both present an offering, and God tells Abel that his offering is better than Cain. And so we, we, we see what happens in Genesis chapter 4, of Cain's response. He's searching for the approval of God. He's searching for this life. He's searching for this next thing. His mind is wandering, but he doesn't feel restful. And here's what happens after God says, listen, Abel gave me the correct offering. It wasn't the amount. It was the heart that was in the amount of it all. And here's what Cain says. This is what his response is in Genesis chapter four. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is far more than I can bear. Today, you are driving me from the land. I will be hidden from your presence. And here's the word. I will be a 
restless wonder. Can I ask you today, you don't have to answer out loud, but can I just ask you today, do you feel like your mind is restless wandering? Will he do this again? Will she do that again? Will the coronavirus kill everybody? What, who do you believe? Do you believe CNN? Do you believe Fox News? Do you believe MSNBC? Like, what do you do? How do you, and your mind is restless wandering. And that's what happens when you have a restless mind. Many of you, you know, as you're watching this live right now on Facebook, many, many of you know this. You know, if you've been following us on social media, you know that April and I have, man, it's been a season for us for the last nine, nine and a half weeks, dealing with April's dad and my father-in-law. And it all started with a stroke and then it, it, it created this pulmonary embolism. And just this week, he had to have a spleen out. And what's interesting, and again, I'm not the most important person in the family, but I'm the one that's kind of advocating putting it all together. And you know what that's done? It's created this weight on me. Are we making the right decision? Are we making the wrong decision? What, what do I do with all this weight? What do I do with all these questions? What do I do with all these decisions? Like, do I, do I make the right decision? Am I making the wrong decision? Am I doing the right thing? Am I, and what happens is the moment I make a decision, I sit back and go, oh, dear God, I hope that was the right decision. And my mind is restlessly wandering, going, did we make the right decision? I hit my lid last week. And I had a meeting over the phone with one of our staff and decisions at, at church, decisions at home, decisions with family. And, and I just took my truck and I parked in a parking lot. And I just sat there in the parking lot. I didn't pray. I didn't even talk to God. You know what I did? I just rested my mind. It was restlessly wandering, worried about everything and understanding nothing. Have you ever felt like that before where your, your mind is wandering and you're like, what do I do? What's a cure? Give me a pill, I'll take it. Give me a drug, I'll, I'll do it. Give me a drink, I'll drink it. And for many of us in this, in this place watching today, you need to realize that our minds are restlessly wandering and we're trying to find all of these things to fill it. Have you ever been there before? where your mind just can't stop moving. You may have found rest for your body. You've, you've slept in and you found rest for your body, but can I just tell you today? You need rest for your body, but what you need more is you need rest for your soul. You need rest for your mind. So where do we find rest? Well, that's a great question. For so many people, we find rest in a vacation, and that's fine. We find rest with our spouse, just a, a time with our spouse. We can find rest with a friend. Maybe you just need to go off with a friend. Or we find rest in, <clears throat> I'm sick, boss. I just need a sick day. Come on, anybody ever done that before? Come on, confession's good for the soul today, okay? I just need a day off. But the truth of the matter is, here's what God is saying to us. The only way for you to find rest is in him alone. No matter what life throws at you, you can try it a myriad of different ways, but rest in him is the only thing that will satisfy you. In fact, the psalmist said it this way in Psalm 62. He said, what do people, I'm sorry, sorry, uh, Psalm 60, 62 in Jesus' name. Psalm 62 says, truly my soul finds rest alone in God. My salvation comes from him. My salvation comes from God, there's, I can wander and wander and wander, but the only wandering that I'll ever find true meaning in is when I rest alone in God. So where are you resting today? I can't answer that for you. You've got to answer it. Where are you resting today? See, if we're not careful, we will find ourselves doing exactly what Solomon said. And here's what he said in Ecclesiastes 2. He said this, he said, what do people do with all the toil and anxious striving with which they labor under the sun? There's toil and striving and what do we do with all of that? He goes on to say this, all their days, their work is grief and pain. Come on, anybody feel like that today? Even at night, here listen to this, even while you're sleeping, even when you're snoring, their minds do not Rest. And I think that's where many of us find ourselves. Our minds just 
aren't resting. Here's what the uh, fourth, uh, uh, century, fourth century philosopher, St. Augustine said. Here, here's what he said. He said "You have about God, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our soul is restless until what? Until it finds rest in you. Can I tell you what's bigger than the coronavirus pandemic that's going on in our world? Can I tell you what's, what's, what's even sadder than that right now? It's a whole bunch of us Christians who are signed, sealed, and delivered. We're going to heaven when we die. We've got our ticket to heaven. We are good to go, but we find ourselves on this earth being okay trusting God with eternity, but having a hard time trusting God with this life. And I think that's what's going on right now as you're watching this. You're like, trust God for salvation? Got that. I'll say the prayer, easy done, easy but having a hard time trusting God with what to do with this coronavirus, having a hard time trusting God with what to do in our marriage. Your mind is restless way wandering and you will not be, you'll be restless until you find rest in God. Jesus talked about this. He talked about what it looks like to find rest. Here's what he said in Matthew chapter 11. He said, come to me. Jesus is beckoning us. That's an old school King James word right there. He's beckoning us. He's calling us. It's the clarion call to everybody. Come to me, all of you who are weary and you're burdened. And I'm not going to give you more money. I'm not going to give you a better marriage. He may. I'm not going to give you the, the desire of your heart. He may. Here's what it says. This is what Jesus says. What I'm going to do before I do any of that, before I give you the desire of your heart, before I give you a better marriage, before I put a million dollars in your bank account when you wake up the next morning, before I do any of that, I'm going to give you rest. See, what Jesus is saying is this. I can't give you anything until you rest in me first. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. It goes on. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you, guess what? Here it is again. You will find rest. Jesus is clarion calling us, saying, rest, rest, rest for your souls. Not for your mind, but for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So what do we do? Okay, that's cool. That's awesome. Cute. Fantastic. Thanks. We tuned in today to hear something. What do we do? Okay, here's what you do. I'm going to leave you with three things, three super practical things that you can do. If you're, if you're admitting, like I'm admitting in this season, I'm admitting to you today, my mind is restless. Even my wife just a few hours ago said, you're preaching on a restless mind and you have one. So I'm talking to you right now. I have a restless mind and I want to replace it for a restful soul. Okay, it's one thing to ask for it. It's a whole other thing to know what to do. So here's what I'm doing, and here's what I'm asking you to do. Three ways for you to have a restful soul when all your mind is doing is wandering restlessly, like Cain said. Here we go. Write them down. Okay, get them down in your spirit. If you're driving, don't write, okay? But, but, but if you're having a place where you can write it, write this down. Here's number one. None of this is rocket science. It's a rem reminder for you. Write it down. Number one is you're going to have to be still. You're like, okay, okay, good, let's move on to number two. That's because you're not still. Yeah, right. So if your first response to this one was like, okay, good, 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 give me something else. You we probably need to not go on to two ever. You need to stay right here. <laughs> be still, be still, be still, be still. Stay right here, be still. And I'm going to tell you, if you've got a personality like me, this is the last thing that I want to do. Yeah. The last thing. In fact, my wife has given me a lecture. I don't know what will happen over the next season, but we do know as of today that schools are closed in Florida for the next two weeks. And she's, got, she's mentioned three times to me, don't just plan our two weeks away. Don't just plan it away. Don't just, we're doing this, this, this. We're going to rest. And I go, I don't want to be still. I want to do. And if you're like me, we got to just sit here. We got to be still. My favorite book, one of my favorite books in the Bible is Psalms, but my favorite psalm in Psalms 
is Psalm 46. I love it. It's fantastic. I've got majority of it memorized. But there's a, there's a key verse. It's kind of like that bathroom on your mirror statement, that, 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 that picture on the wall in your living room. You, you've all seen it before. It's Psalm 46 and verse 10. Would you please get this in your spirit, church, that we are to be still and know that he is God. Whatever you're going through, let me just say, these aren't two things. They're, they're one. You can't be still without knowing God. And you can't know God unless you're still. Some of you know God, but you're still not still. Some of you are being still, but you don't know God. You can't do it effectively. Be still and know that he is God. You're not busy. You're not productive. You're not moving. The Bible says, don't move, don't do, don't try, don't produce. Be still. The only way that you can rest is to get away with him and allow him to talk to you. Do you know anybody that has a hard time being still? Come on, I, I know a bunch of people in my life, including me. A couple years ago, we did family pictures and April sent me on a mission. She said, listen, I need you to get Layla, that's our nine-year-old daughter, I need you to get Layla some yellow pants. And my first thought was, I'm going to get this wrong. Because if you're a man watching today, you know there's a hundred shades of yellow. So I go to Target, wrong. I go to Walmart, wrong. I go to the third store and I finally find the right yellow pants. And we change her, get her all ready and it's sweating. It's in the middle of the summer. And we finally get to this place. It's in the park. We're taking family pictures with April's family. And we get there and I say, okay, here we go, guys. Your hair is perfect. Everything. Just be still. I kid you not, I'm not exaggerating. Within 30 seconds, I turned around and Layla is sliding in the mud with her brand new yellow pants. And this was my thought, this girl can't be still. And the moment I said that, the Lord said, and neither can my sons and daughters. And I think there's way too many people watching this live right now. And you're going, oh, that's a cute story about your, your daughter, that's awesome. You're like, okay, let's move on. No, no, the reality is this, you won't be still. There's no way for you to get past any season unless you are still. Say, be still. Come on, everybody, come on, say it, be still. Be still. Psalm 131 says this, listen to this verse. It says, instead I have calmed and quieted myself like a weaned child who no longer cries for his mother's milk. Here it goes on. Yes, like a weaned child is my soul within you. I am going to be still. So here's the goal. This week, for the next seven days, I'm gonna ask you to take five minutes and be still. Yes, do your devotions. Yes, read the Bible. Yes, consult your friends. Yes, do all, your, all of that. But just take five minutes and be still. Do nothing. Just be still. In fact, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Everybody. Now, if you're, if, you're, if you're driving, this is going to be a little bit awkward. If you're running on the treadmill, it may be a little bit difficult for you. But I'm, we're going to practice it right here. And for the next 60 seconds, I want you to be still. We're not going to move. We're not going to talk. For some of you, this is going to feel like an eternity. For some of you are like, I could do this in my sleep. So let's do that for 60 seconds. If you're an Enneagram 7, this is going to be a torture for you. If you're an Enneagram 3, it's going to be even more torture for you. We're going to take 60 seconds. I've got a timer up here. We're going to take 60 seconds. And I just want you to be still. Just be still. So here we go, 60 seconds. Let's be still. Sixty seconds is over. Torture chamber is over. Okay, guys. 
Some of you, that felt like an eternity. But for some of you, that was the best 60 seconds of your day. You weren't having to produce. You weren't having to meet. You weren't having to do anything. You were given permission just to be still. Whatever you're going through, the first step is to be still. Here's the second. Write it down. Write it down. Be still. After you're still, the second one is you're going to have to be patient. Be patient. To which you go, I had a hard enough time with number one. I can't do this one either. Be patient. Patient. Here's what the psalmist said in Psalm 37. He says, be still before the Lord. And here's what he's asking us to do. And wait patiently before him. I have people tell me all the time in the profession that I'm in, they tell me, how do I hear from Jesus? I just want to know I heard from Jesus. Like, how do I hear from God? And here's what I tell people. Here's, here's the method to hear from God. Be still and be patient. To which they say back to me, okay, well, how do I wait patiently? How do I wait patiently for this coronavirus to end? How do I wait patiently for this thing to be over? How do I wait patiently for God to, how how do I wait patiently? Well, there's a lot of different ways, but can I tell you the fail safe way for you to wait patiently? The Bible says we are to wait patiently in his word, in his word. His unfailing word. In fact, Psalm 130 says this. It says, I wait patiently for the Lord. My whole being waits in where? In his word. I put my hope. So so what are you telling me? Just to sit back and just do nothing? Just just to be patient and all of this? No, 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 no. You're missing the point. Listen, write this down. Get in your spirit. Don't just wait patiently. Wait expectantly. Go to God boldly. In fact, Hebrews chapter four says this, that we are to approach his throne boldly. Come on, moms and dads watching. One of the things that you wanna do more than any other thing is to give to your kids. If you had it all, guess who would get your all? Your kids, your grandkids. If we think the same way on this earth, how much more does God wanna bless his kids? Wait patiently, yet wait patiently expectantly. Well, I just feel like I'm being lazy when I'm patient. Okay, listen, this is huge for you. If you're like me, OCD, type A personality, like you're like DI all the way and a whole lot of D and less I. You're like red T to go. Let me help you with this. This is huge. When we are present with God in rest, he is present with us in our work. So when you're present with God in rest, He's present with you in your work. And so I don't know what your life looks like, but for the next two weeks, for the vast majority of us, it's gonna be a little bit different than the previous two weeks. So what do I do? If we will be present with God in our rest, when it's time to go back to whatever back is, he will be present with us in our work. Don't go through the motions. Approach his throne boldly. Nothing scares God. But when you go to him and you don't immediately get the answer that you want, we just sit back, wait patiently, yet we wait expectantly. Say, be still. Come on, say, be still. Number two, hey, say it with me. Say, be patient. Come on, look, look, look to the person you're watching this with and just look at them and go, hey, I need you to be patient with me. Just come on, say it with them. Be, be patient. So we gotta be still and we've gotta be patient. But here's the third one. And maybe this one's a little bit easier for some of you, but if you've got some trauma in your background, if you've got some pieces that are closets in your background, that back, back in your history that are a little bit hard, this one may be difficult for you. But here's the third one, the third and final way for us to replace our restless mind with a restful soul and heart. Here's the third one is we've got to be still, we've got to be patient. And number three, we must be reflective. We're going to have to be reflective. When you are busy all the time, here's what happens. You are thinking of all the needs around you, all the checklists. If you're watching this and you're a checklist person, you are hating me right now. You're like, all I want to do is for you to shut up so I can go back to my checklist. And can I just help you with something? God wants you to be still. He wants you to be patient, but he wants you to be reflective. In fact, the busier busier you are, the less reflective you have the chance to be. He wants you to be reflective. So not just God give me that, 
but reflecting back on what he's already done for you. How, how many moms and dads, you realize when your kids understand that they're blessed and they, they, they come to you and say, hey, thank you for that, and there's, no, there's nothing that they want back, they just wanna thank you. How many know the next time they want something, come on, you're more willing to give that to them? Why? Because they're reflective. They realize, you know what? I'm so thankful that if you give me nothing else, mom and dad, you've given me everything. And listen, your God wants to give to you, but he wants to give to a person who is reflective. Here's what the psalmist said. Psalm 116 says this. Let my soul be at rest again. Can I say this to you? This is what it means to be reflective. God, there was a season where I was restful. There was a season where I rested. But right now, my life is just not resting. And so if you're watching this and you're like, I just want to be, listen, this is reflective. Just go to God and say, listen, my soul isn't at rest. I want to rest again. I want to reflect back on what you've already done for me. And here's what he says. He said, the Lord, for the Lord has been good to me and he has saved me from hell. Can I just say this to you? It all goes back to your salvation. Everything goes back to your salvation. You gotta remind yourself that when you were a kid or you're an adult or last week, the moment that God says, I'm gonna set your feet on solid ground and I'm giving you heaven. But not only does he wanna save you from a literal hell, he wants to save you from the figurative hell that you're walking through right now. Would you disagree with me? And I know hell's a, a strong term, but would you disagree with me that America's walking through a real tough season right now? Just check your retirement. Check your 401k right now. I had to go to the bathroom after I checked mine yesterday. We're in a tough season. So how do we rest? We gotta be still, we gotta be patient must be reflective and to realize he's good. He saved us from hell and he'll save us from the hell that we're walking through right now. Amen. And what he did, my tears, he saved me from my, my eyes of tears. He saved me from this past season. He saved me from that lost hope. He saved me from that season where I cried myself to sleep. He saved me from that season where I lifted my hand up and said, God, I don't know where to go from here. I'm no longer there. My eyes, he saved me from my eyes that were tearful. He saved me when my feet were stumbling, Psalm 116 says. It's that season of your life, that regretful season, when you did the, oh no, I wish I could take it back. When your feet stumbled a little bit, we'd be reflective because we remember we're no longer where we used to be. God has saved us. He's set our feet back on firm foundation. And can we just praise God? You may not be where you want to be, but can we just declare today, you, you may not be where you want to be, but praise God, you're not where you used to be. God loves you. He's for you. He's given his entire life for you. We've got to be reflective. I just took a second Friday and I just started writing some things that I need to be reflective about. Maybe this will, this will help you. I just won't, I'm gonna preach these at you, all right? I wanna remind you that Jesus will never leave you and will never forsake you. He has answered your prayers. You are forgiven. The old is gone. The new is coming. He is the Lamb of God and he's the Lion of Judah. He's the Alpha and the Omega and he is working all things for your good. He says to you, I'm gonna bless you on the way in and I'm gonna bless you on the way out. And he says his plans for you are to prosper. We've gotta be reflective. We've gotta be reflective on who God is and what he's doing in our life. Let me land the plane, get you back to your day. Let me land the plane by saying this. I wanna give you one thought and then one story that we're gonna to pray together. Here, here's, here's something that you need to know, something that you must understand today is this. We generally see what we look for. We'll find what we search for. And guess what today? you'll experience what you expect. Let me just say this again. Listen, get this in your, soul, in your soul. It's gonna replace that restless mind with a restful heart and soul. Listen, you will see what you're looking for. Don't let these eyes deceive you. You'll see what you're looking for. You'll find what you're searching for and you'll experience what you expect. When was the last time you went to Walmart or to Target 
or the mall if you like the mall. And you got there and you, before you got there, you were on a mission. You were like, I'm going for this one thing. And you were on a mission and you, you just got there and you're, you're, you're blindfolded. You're like, I'm not looking, I got, I'm just, I'm going after this one thing. And you got it and you got back in your car and you're like, man, I got that one thing, that's what I came for. But how many of you know this? There are times when we say this, I think I'm gonna go grocery shopping. And how many know whatever, what is in your cart is more than what you expected to be in your carts? You know why? Because we generally see what we're looking for and we'll find what we're searching for and we'll experience what we expect. Can I tell you this? Just like you're shopping at Walmart, God is the same way. That he wants you to walk into the Walmart God has for you. And don't be blinded by the candy aisle. Don't be blinded by the BOGO that's right over here that says, listen, this is a buy one, get one free. Don't be blinded by that. How many of you know the buy one, get one frees are never good for you? It's always the chips. It's always the soda. Like, like they never put the bananas, buy one, get one free. Come on, I'm preaching to somebody. Here's what God's saying to you. You need to get your blinders up. And when you go into the Walmart of God, you're on one mission. You're not looking to be fulfilled this way. You're not looking to be fulfilled this way. I'm just looking to be fulfilled by God. And I'm gonna go into God's Walmart and I'm just gonna say, God, I'm here for you. I'm gonna be still. I'm gonna be patient. I'm gonna be reflective. That's what I'm asking of you sons and daughters of mine, God says. And our response needs to be this. I'm all in, God. I don't know what Fox News is going to say. I don't know what this is going to say. I don't know what CNN is going to say. I don't even like the president. I love the president. He's doing a terrible job. He's doing a great job. I hate government. I love the government. I did. Can we just get rid of that? And can we just say this? God, we're trusting you. And through all this craziness, we're going to be still. We're going to stop. <laughs> and our foot tapping and we're so nervous. We're going to be still. We're going to be patient. And realize God's timing's better than my timing. And we're gonna be reflective. We're gonna be reflective. God, we're asking you to fix this coronavirus thing, but God, if you choose to go something different, we're gonna trust you all the way through. Because we don't store up treasures on this side, we're storing up treasures on the other side. So if you love Jesus and your hands are available, can we give them praise together today? Awesome. So I wanna pray for you. Wherever you're at today, I'd love to pray for you. So if you can, if you're available, would you just bow your head and would you close your eyes? Now, if you're driving, listen, be safe. We're not asking you to not be safe. But I think God wants to do some business with you just for, just for a minute before I get you on with your day. Maybe you're here today, wherever you're at. And by here, it could be on the treadmill. By here, it could be at home with your community group. By here, it could be driving in your car. But wherever you're at, at here, this place, and you're having a hard time being still, would you still allow God to talk to you right now? Maybe you're here and you're, you're you're having a hard time being patient. Maybe wherever you're at, you're having a hard time being reflective. I wanna pray over you. So would you bow your head and close your eyes? Father, I pray for each and every person that's when the sound of my voice, saying, God, I need you. I wanna be still. My mind is restlessly wandering in a hundred different directions. I'm choosing today, right now, to be still and know that you're God. That if we can't be still, then we gotta ask ourselves, how much are we trusting you? And God, we're choosing to be patient. And God, we realize this, while we wait patiently, we're also gonna wait expectantly into believing you're for us. So we're making a commitment today to wait patiently. But God, we're also gonna be reflective. We're not just gonna continue to come to you like like you're just some cosmic Santa Claus with our massive list. We're coming to you saying this, God, thank you for what you've already done. God, if you do nothing else for us, you've done enough. But God, you ask us in Hebrews 4 to come to the throne boldly. So God, now that we've been reflective and we've thanked you with a pure heart, we're coming before you saying, God, would you, would you do this? 
Now with your head bowed and with your eyes closed, as you're watching this, maybe, maybe you're visiting with us, maybe you've never crossed the line of faith. I wanna give you an opportunity, wherever you're at, to put your faith and trust in Jesus. So would you say something like this? If you, if you need to trust Jesus with your eternal soul, say, say something like this to God. Just say, Lord, you're my Lord and Savior, Jesus. I need you. Thank you for the cross that you died on. I thank you for the resurrection that you're no longer in the grave and I'm choosing to trust you. I'm worshiping you today and for the rest of my life. And Father, as we close out this moment today, we're closing it out this way. Father, you are bigger than the coronavirus. You are bigger than disease. You are bigger than cancer. You are bigger than any ailment. And we declare that you have broken all of that like you've broken the enemy's back. So God, we're not choosing fear, but we're not even choosing faith. We're choosing you because you will never leave us and you'll never forsake us. We love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody who's watching said, amen. Come on, can we give God praise? Come on, can we praise him? Amen. Thank you for watching Wellspring Online. Don't just stop here. Join our family by following us on social media at WellspringFL and by subscribing to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any videos or live streams. And don't forget to share this with a friend. And if this ministry has impacted you in any way, you can support us and give here at Wellspring by going to our website, wellspringfl.com give. By giving, you become a part of our passion of giving real people real hope in this real world. Thank you again for watching and may God's peace lead you and be with you.